regardless if Trump or Biden win the 2024 presidential election, in order to actually get anything done, they will need the support of the highly contested Senate. Looking at the states up for grabs, Republicans have a clear fundamental advantage since out of the 34 seats, only 11 are Republican compared to 23 being Democrats. Eight of those currently blue seats are also a part of some of the most competitive states in the country politically. With the Democrat slim majority at risk, today we're going to look at the 2024 Senate elections map filling in based on the most recent polls for every race, so let's get right into it. On the West Coast, the first state we can give to the Democrats is the Aloha state of Hawaii where Maisie Hirono is seeking her third term. There aren't any polls available as of right now, but given Hawaii historical solid blue stance, we can make it our first safe Democrat state. Moving on to the mainland United States, right along the Pacific Ocean is the state of Washington, a state that is another solid blue with Maria Cantwell expected to win her fifth term in office. The most recent poll from Elway Research shows her winning by a margin of plus 9 over her Republican counterpart, Dr. Raul Garcia. A margin of plus 9 makes Washington a likely Democrat state. Just south of Washington is the state of California. California is a state that hasn't put a Republican in the Senate since the 80s, and it seems it will continue its blue trend with Adam Schiff expected to beat former LA Dodger Steve Garvey. The most recent poll from the Public Policy Institute of California, which polled over a thousand likely voters, shows Schiff winning by a margin of plus 25, making California a safe blue state. Next up, we have Nevada, with one-term Democratic incumbent Jackie Rosen. After beating the incumbent Republican Dean Heller by a margin of 5 points in 2018, current polling shows that she'll probably win again. According to the most recent poll from Emerson College, in a head-to-head -head against military veteran Sam Brown, we can see Rosen wins by pretty significant margins of 12 points according to 1,000 registered voters. Even though we would usually consider Nevada to be a highly contested state, basing our map off of the most recent polls alone makes this solid blue. Moving back up north to one of the closest Senate races this cycle with Montana, a usually solid red state on the presidential level. Surprisingly though, the spot up for grabs is three-term incumbent Democrat John Tester, who is looking to run for a fourth term. Polls also show a close race, with the most recent one showing Tester and Tim Sheehy, a retired Navy SEAL turned businessman and politician, at a tie. Because of this tie, Montana could go either way, making it a toss-up state. Things look better for two-term incumbent John Barrasso in Wyoming. There aren't any polls for Wyoming as of right now, but given how this is considered to be the most Republican state in the nation, it's safe to say it'll probably end up being solid red. Moving on to the state of Utah, one-term senator and former presidential candidate Mitt Romney isn't going to run for re-election, leaving his spot up for grabs, but it probably won't go to the Democrats. There aren't any polls yet between the two parties, but Utah hasn't elected a Democrat in the Senate since 1977. The nominee, most likely John Curtis based on polling, will have no issue winning the election. Down in Arizona, it seemed like this race would have been one of the most interesting in recent times because incumbent Senator Kristen Sinema changed parties midterm from Democrat to Independent. This change made this election look like it was going to be a three-way race. That was until she announced that she wasn't going to run again, leaving the other two candidates, Democrat Ruben Gallego and Republican Carrie Lake in a head-to-head face-off. The most recent poll from North Star Opinion Research gives Gallego a one-point lead over Lake, according to 600 likely voters. This still looks like it'll be an exciting race to watch, but right now, we can tilt Arizona to the Democrats. Moving on to our next state, New Mexico, where Martin Heinrich is looking for his third term after winning it in 2018 in a three-way race with 54%. The most recent poll with Heinrich and his Republican counterpart, Nella Dominici, gives the incumbent a plus 7 margin. Depending on how well Dominici is able to campaign, she could bring this back, but as of right now, we can make New Mexico a likely Democrat state. Moving into the southern region of the United States in the Lone Star state of Texas, two-term incumbent Ted Cruz is running for a third term. He is likely to see as big of a Democratic push as he has seen in his last few elections. This growing GOP support is supported by the most recent poll which shows Cruz leading by plus 11 over his Democratic competitor, Colin Allred. 
a much different change when comparing it to how Cruz won it in 2018 by less than 3 percentage points. Because of this, we can give Texas a likely Republican stance on the map. Next up are the states of Mississippi, with current Senator Roger Wicker looking for a third term, and Tennessee, with one-term incumbent Marsha Blackburn looking for a second. Both states are reliably Republican on the presidential level, and while Mississippi doesn't have any polls as of right now, Tennessee does. The most recent poll from Tennessee shows Blackburn winning by a plus 11 margin, making this state a likely Republican vote. And for Mississippi, given how reliably red it has been historically, we can make it solid red. Moving over to the most southeastern state, Florida. Looking for a re-election this time around is one-term Republican incumbent Rick Scott, who in 2018 barely beat longtime Floridian Senator Bill Nelson. This time around though, it is unlikely that he will see such a close race since the change in this state has been some of the most drastic in the country. We can see this with Senator Marco Rubio winning his last re-election with a margin of over 15 points in 2022. And on top of that, the three most recent polls show Scott winning by an average of plus 6. With this data, we can safely make Florida a lean Republican state. Virginia is another state where a reasonably popular Democrat will be running for re-election with an incumbent Tim Kaine looking for his third term. In 2018, Kaine won with 57%, over 15 points higher than his Republican counterpart, Corey Stewart. Every poll from Virginia shows Kaine beating all the possible GOP nominees, with the most recent one showing a plus 12 margin over Hun Kao. This is enough to make Virginia a safe Democrat vote. The last state in the southern region of the United States is West Virginia. The current Democratic Senator, Joe Manchin, isn't planning on running for re-election, giving Republicans a pretty easy shot at flipping it. The most recent poll shows what most expect with Republican nominee Jim Justice beating Democratic nominee Glenn Elliott by a margin of plus 33. This gives Democrats almost no chance of winning West Virginia, making it solid red. Moving over to the Midwest is our first state, North Dakota, with Kevin Kramer, a one-term incumbent, looking for his second term. The most recent poll has Kramer winning by a margin of plus 26, making a safe Republican state. Nebraska has two elections this cycle, both with incumbent Republicans seeking re-election. Nebraska as a whole is very Republican, which should make both races easy victories. There's only one polling for the main race in Nebraska, and it shows Republican incumbent Deb Fisher beating Democratic nominee Dan Osborne by a margin of plus four. While I don't think it'll end up being this close given Nebraska's history, we can make the main race lean Republican and a special election a solid red. In Missouri, Josh Hawley is another Republican incumbent looking for a second term. Polling has been pretty consistent with the most recent one showing a plus nine in favor of Hawley while Missouri would usually be considered a safe GOP state. Based on this poll, it will only be a likely. The state of Minnesota has been a lot closer on the presidential level than most expected. On the Senate level, we see three-term Democrat Amy Klobuchar is looking for her fourth and it doesn't look close. A series of polls conducted by Servant USA found that when up against the two main Republican nominees, Klobuchar, wins by margins of plus 13 against Joe Fraser and plus 14 against Royce White. While we can't be sure how Minnesota will end up voting on the presidential level, on the Senate level, it's safely in Democrats' hands. In Wisconsin, two-term Democratic incumbent Tammy Baldwin is fighting for re-election. In her last election in 2018, she won by a margin of over 10 points. But this cycle, repeating that margin might be a little harder given how much closer this election is looking. The most recent poll between Baldwin and her Republican counterpart, Eric Hovde, shows the incumbent leading by just plus three. While again, it is still too early to really tell, especially in a state as unpredictable as Wisconsin, it's most likely going to end up being a tilt Democrat state. Moving along the Rust Belt is Michigan. Current Senator Debbie Stabenow is retiring after holding this seat since the year 2000, and the favorite to replace her seems to be Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin, with the Republican opposition probably being Trump-endorsed politician Mike Rogers. The race seems to be close, but looking at the most recent poll between the two, Slotkin wins by a margin of plus five, making Michigan a lean Democrat state. Next up is Indiana, where current one-term incumbent Mike Braun is planning to run for governor rather than another term as senator. To replace him is current United States Representative Jim Banks, 
who has already received endorsements from many notable names in the Republican Party, including Donald Trump. Even though it will be Banks' first shot at a seat in the Senate, he is favored to win since Indiana has proven to be a very popular Trump state. The most recent poll between Banks and the Democratic nominee, Corey McRae, shows Banks winning by a double-digit margin of plus 10. Because of this, we can make Indiana a likely red state. Neighboring Indiana is our next state, Ohio. Like John Tester in Montana, three-term incumbent Sherrod Brown is a Democratic senator in a very Republican state. His biggest competitor this cycle is Bernie Moreno, a car dealership owner turned politician who gained a big chunk of support thanks to his Trump endorsement. The most recent poll between the two shows Brown in the lead by a margin of plus 5. The election is several months away still, and this could change, but as of right now, we can make Ohio lean to the Democrats. Moving into the northeastern region of the United States, this is where we still see the Democrats start to catch up. Starting off in Pennsylvania, incumbent Democratic Senator Bob Casey Jr. is up against Republican nominee Dave McCormick. A businessman turned politician, the most recent poll shows Casey leading by just plus 6, much lower than the margins he's won in the past, but still a comfortable number for him. Polls on the presidential level are a lot more unclear, but given the consistent polling on the Senate level, we can make Pennsylvania a lean Democrat state. Next up are the reliably blue states of Maryland, Delaware, and New Jersey. Maryland this time around has some unique circumstances since three-term Democratic Senator Ben Cardin is planning to retire and popular Republican governor Larry Hogan is set to run as a Republican nominee. Even with him being popular though, the two most recent head-to-head -head polls with him and the potential Democratic nominees show him losing by 11 points against David Trone and by 10 points against Angela Alsobrooks. Because of this, we can make Maryland likely Democrat. In Delaware, the incumbent Democrat Tom Carper is planning to retire. While there aren't any polls, the Republicans don't have a notable enough candidate this cycle who can really challenge the Democratic nominee, most likely Lisa Blunt Rochester. Because of this, we can make Delaware solid blue. The current senator of New Jersey, Bob Menendez, is under fire for corruption charges and he has already said that he won't be running for re-election. Current United States Representative Andy Kim is likely to take his place and when pulled up against both major Republican nominees, he wins by a margin of plus 9, making New Jersey likely Democrat. Next up is the Empire State of New York, where Kirsten Gillibrand is looking for her third term. Surprisingly, there aren't any polls for the Senate race as of the making of this video, but given how New York hasn't put a Republican in the Senate since the 90s, we can make it solid blue. Moving further north to the New England states, the same solid blue trend we see at the presidential level is expected to continue to the Senate election. Neighboring New York is the smaller state of Vermont where Bernie Sanders, the longest running independent in congressional history, is planning on running again. Just like with New York, however, there aren't any polls yet, but with him caucusing with the Democratic Party and given his general popularity, we can make Vermont solid blue. Just south of Vermont is the second most democratic state in the nation, Massachusetts, where incumbent Senator Elizabeth Warren is looking for her third term, which she is likely to win. The most recent polls between her and the four potential Republican nominees shows her sweeping house, winning by margins greater than 20 points. Because of this, we can make Massachusetts another solid blue state. Moving on to Rhode Island and Connecticut, both states have three-term incumbent Democrats running for re-election. Shelton Whitehouse in Rhode Island and Chris Murphy in Connecticut. Neither states have any polls as of right now, but because these are historically blue, we can assume they will continue to be safe Democrat states. Our last states is Maine, with independent incumbent Angus King in a similar situation like Bernie Sanders in Vermont. Caucusing with the Democrats makes his only opponent Demi Kazunis, which as of right now, looks like it's gonna be an easy win for King. The most recent poll shows King winning by a margin of plus 29, which makes this one of our easiest solid blue states on the map today. Without Montana's vote, the final score is 49 to 50 with the Republicans in the lead, putting the future of the Senate in the hands of Montana's voters.